This new book, Astro Mythos, is a gorgeous illustrated novel in the style of Tolkien, if you will. Poetry and images put together by a gentleman that was kind enough to come on the Artist Appeals podcast. He's season two, episode four. His name is John Sidariatis, and John has a tongue twister of a last name. In fact, I had to go back to the podcast and listen again to how he pronounced his name. So please join me as I show you in detail this gorgeous illustration. I'm going to talk about his inspiration for this. I'm going to read you a couple of passages and translate from this work over here on the left give you the behind the scoop, behind the scenes scoop of what's going on, and a sneak peek into Astro Mythos. All right, I'd like to just show you and read to you some of the lines of this beautiful poem. Now, I'm not a poet, so I have to put a disclaimer here. I can't read poetry with anything approaching the beauty and the power of some of my friends that are word poets. So please forgive me if I slander this. But I've taken some notes here and I want to share them with you. So how this starts out is that there's a beautiful warrior queen and she gets caught up with some comments. So let's listen to this first stanza of the poem. The biting horn like Zos him made as cold in thought and rich of heart, wherein no dame nor comet fair would ever with him cold, with her cold, him smart. But long it took to earn their trust, such to urge them all to fight, which time enough for wordlets was to finally align by right. For ere the comets had embarked, and Thraka was forced at the star, hurled along with hordes of Tromon and from her comet's air so far. So this first line is basically talking about how she's a dame, right? A dame is a woman, and they trick her into fighting. Somebody earns their trust and urges them to fight, but the comets had already left, and they're being forced at this star. Now, in the next line, Basically, what happens is the queen is being forced to fight, but she doesn't know that she's going to get totally killed in battle. Take a listen. And when their courses came to cross, in terror winced the wordlets four, that all the Tromon were unleashed, and hailing boulders like did pour. Fraught with fear, the comets raced to reach the host and save their queen. Their queen, whom with Zonos forced to lead this onslaught unforeseen. So hard she fought to break away, as great a tail grew from her rear. And in she blent with them so well, that of their ilk she did appear. So in this last section, this last line, she's trying to get away, but she grows a tail and starts to look just like the comets. I think that's just quite beautiful and he depicts this in this illustration over here with this beautiful tail decorated with nine eyes some of them open some of them half-lidded all of them slightly different and some of them even closed back to the poem this is perhaps my whole favorite line on this page the star mistook her as a villain a spiteful wench of grief a tail tongue twister let's try it again the star mistook her as a villain a spiteful wrench wench wench <laughs> of grief a trail third time's the charm clap clap the star mistook her as a villain a spiteful wench of grief a trail and so he steeled himself and rose to arm his kingly wordless four for impact braced, barbment heavy to make with Zonos a war. 
So the star thinks that the queen is going to attack him and he braces himself for impact. Sounds like a big misunderstanding to me. It's going to have bad ramifications. Well, it sure does. Because in this next stanza, he draws his spear and he slays them one by one. Let's listen. Hyperodus drew his spear of sorrow slow and huge in spite that he might slay them one by one and for his very honor fight. The star prince screamed a rolling blaze spewing toward its ten of fire, arcs of ultraviolet death and held his ground with heaping ire. Still the monsters forthright fared a storm broad storm of metal and stone, which through his wordlets gnawed a rush and swarmed in numbers overgrown. Comets keep coming, keep coming even though he spews fire out of his mouth. And that's what's depicted down here on the bottom. The star prince spewing fire. And finally, the last stanza. The comets with the failed star clashed, although his host had been released and charged with horns of baneful frost down to bring the bitter beast. But he, nor planet, near, nor neither star. Let's try that again. The comets with the failed star clashed, although his host had been released and charged with horns of baneful frost down to bring the bitter beast. But he, nor planet, nor star, their brave assault with ease survived. Through his flesh the comets passed, as if through dirty clouds they dived. For thin his skin was made of gas, that none with him could e'er collide, that none could hurt him, none could touch him. Never till the day he died. So, at the very end on this page, the comet versus the star's war. The comets pass right through the thin early skin of the star. He's immortal. There you have a sneak peek. I apologize for any horrible mispronunciations of words. But... I did my best on this to help you translate and give you a sneak peek of what's going on in this epic saga in Arto. And there you have it, folks. A little sneak peek of the story and the illustration of Astro Mythos. If you're interested in learning more about the business of art and you don't have time to listen to hours and hours of podcast, free podcast information on the artist appeals, then I would like to invite you to another opportunity. I want to thank you for listening to the artistappeals.com. And if you are interested in a summary of all the different things, the top four things actually, that I learned from interviewing all these different amazing artists, creatives, individuals, then you can get a free download, The Four Secrets of How to Make Money with Your Art at How to Make Money money with your art. I know it's a long domain, but it's a dot com. You can get the top four secrets for how to make money with your art at how to make money with your art dot com. Please feel free to go download it. It's a summary of the top four secret things I learned from interviewing over two dozen creatives about how they made a life and a business in the arts.
So go download it for free at howtomakemoneywithyourart.com before it's gone. <laughs> Good luck.